Here we go. Frog spawns coming out. Hey, what's up, Reefers? This video may very well be one of the last video before my boy comes mid next week. I'm freaking out. If possible, during this period of time, I'll still put a video out each week. We'll really have to see how it goes. And that's why I made sure this week's video is gonna be awesome. It's a long video that covered a major change in my 45 gallon as well as my 10 gallon budget nano tank. Basically, I changed the look of both tanks. Before we dive into it, I want to tell you a little bit about the design of this new shirt. Uh, the Reef Squad shirt is awesome. I also want something new for 2019 and here it is. This is the Inappropriate Reefer shirt by Ocean Swag. Really quick little story before jumping into the tank update. Rewind back to 2018 when it was the first Aquachella in Chicago. It was an awesome show and I remember that they had a really awesome shirt. Roll it. After the show, the design of that shirt stuck to my mind because I really wanted something in that kind of vibe. So when it comes time to make a new shirt, I reached out to George and asked him, hey, who designed it, that Aquachella shirt? What's up guys, my name's George Mavrakis. I own an aquarium event business and YouTube channel. I've used John Speed Viesca for multiple projects, but mainly for my event business. He's designed graphic art for our merchandise for two shows now. Both times my shirts sold out. As you know, he also does music and He's a very multi-talented human being, He's somebody that I would totally recommend, and John Speed Viesca is the man. Who was that? Who's that really mature businessman? What? Well, if John is good enough for that really professional businessman, he is absolutely good enough for me. So I reached out to John and Ocean Swag and we did a collaboration and the result is this awesome shirt right here. Now you may be asking, why is there a porcupine puffer there? Mm, hang out and you will find out. So the 2019 Inappropriate Reefer shirt comes in purple base or black base. I may have other color down the road once I get around to it because again, kid is coming. If you want to learn more, it should be on the merch shelf already or there's a link to Teespring to check it out. And once again, I just want to give a huge shout out, huge thank you to John of Ocean Swag. This team is amazing. Apparently John is awesome at DJ and he got a team that can do some amazing graphic work as well as video production. Just check this out. Control all delete. Ravers don't go to sleep. Control all delete. Kids don't smoke weed. Control all delete. I'm not gonna keep you any longer. Enjoy this update. Flashback. Hey, what's up, Reefers? This is gonna be a pretty serious vlog. Um, there's issue with the 45 gallon tank. Let me, let me kind of talk you guys through it. Two weeks ago, we started having issue with the Kryptonite Candy Cane Corals. Uh, by the way, Emily's holding the camera, thank you. Um, I fracked, well, I removed the ammo crap. I removed three ammo crabs. Uh, to this day, I still, I'm still kind of convinced that they're 100% reef safe. Um, however, I might be blaming them for something that is a little bit more serious. As you can see, even after fragging off the dead skeleton, one polyp is still kind of receding in the middle. All right, but that's not, this is already a lot better because it has been about two weeks and things are healing. However, the major issue is the big frog spawn colony up top right there, if you can see. For the past, 
a uh, week and a half, two weeks, it started closing up. It started looking really, really sad. I couldn't figure out what it is. Uh, there could be a range of things. If you look at the video, I've noticed that it started becoming sad for maybe like for a month or two already. It could be a, again, it could be a range of things, but bottom line is that it is simply not happy in this tank. And a lot of people was thinking, oh, maybe it is the rose of the enemy that's kind of bothering the coral. But my thought is that, okay, it's only bothering one portion of the colony. Do they really communicate the whole, the whole colony where the pile of the snakes stand on the other side? Um, I don't, I do not know. My gut feeling is that I don't think so. Uh, but however, something else is going on. So I try many different things. Um, I double checked the salinity. Salinity is actually slightly high. Uh, the, I should have calibrated the meter much more frequently, but it's high by 0 0.001. So it's 1.027. I double checked the trusty swing um, hydrometer. I feel funny just saying that now. And it was indeed a little bit high. So I did that adjustment over the course of two days. Uh, things look slightly better, but still kind of like this for a couple of days. Um, I double checked the nitrates. Nitrate is definitely elevated. Elvetra is probably elevated because I pulled out pretty much half my refugium um, when I was pruning the macroalgae. And then I kept dosing the liquid nitrate stump remover show right here so i've been do dosing this pretty consistently because the refugium sucking up so much and corals was losing color so i was like okay let's add some nitrate let's add some nitrate let's add some nitrate and it has been working fine for me for a couple months um so i feel like it's a combination of many many different things i've done a couple water changes um for the most part the past couple weeks Nothing else really, uh, the other coral seems really okay. It really hit the LPS hard. Again, it's a kryptonite candy cane. Actually, it's this chalice right here. Look at that. See how it's half skeletons? Um, that, I wonder, is actually battling with the chalice right next to it. So, I don't know. And also, mainly the frog spawn. That's actually my big concern because that's such a beautiful colony and it's been with me for so long. As the king of knee-jerk reactions, and seeing how things have not been turning around for like a week or two already um, and the fact that the coral, I, I don't want to keep it in this condition for too long because there comes a point where it starts receding and then it's going to be a downward spiral if it's not there already. Um, I made a pretty drastic decision. I figured the anemone is doing really, really nice in this tank. Frostman is doing really, really nice in the 10 gallon budget tank. And the rose and anemone and the tangle of the tank is definitely kind of like moving around, creeping into the frog spawn upstairs. What if we move all three anemones, or at least two, from upstairs to this tank and move this, or try to move this big frog spawn colony into the 10 gallon tank? Now, I'm not sure if this whole thing is gonna fit. I'll try to fit as much as possible. But for the long term forward of this channel, you guys know that this big colony. <laughs> this big colony is actually two big pieces. It's not one giant one. It's actually two big pieces I stacked together. And that's actually one of the tricks that I have uh, is that these kind of branching euphilias, even if you have like small pieces, it's okay. Put them together and they look like a nice giant colony and nobody would be the wiser. Um, so I got that going for me in terms of um, fitting things. So let's give that a try. This is gonna be a major undertaking and this is gonna reshape the face of both the 45 gallon tank and the 10 gallon tank. Again, if I have all the time in the world, I would love to try and fix the water issue here or whatever issue is causing this. I would run an ICP test, etc. But again, I feel like I may not have that much time for the corals. I can see what some people are saying already. It's like, oh yeah, don't make all these changes all at once. You know, corals are gonna scrap, blah, 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 blah. But seriously, I, I feel like we're at a point if I wait too long and just gonna it thinks it's just gonna go bad because I feel like we're at the doorstep so huh, let's get started I don't look forward to this guys before we go all like DEFCON 4 and start ripping things out I just want to show you guys one final look of this frog spawn colony just look at all the polyps look at all this like mini polyps that's growing between the branches look at that so these will all over time grow out to be uh, new heads Pretty awesome, right? All right, guys. Um, I keep going back and forth. There's one thing I just thought of that may be the cause. But I'm looking at the foul fish. Make sure foul fish not picking anything. Right now, I'm just like thinking of anything. Look, there's a foul fish. Yeah, it's not picking anything. So okay. Um, 
Recently, I upgraded the Radeon to a G4 Pro. It was a G3 before, but the setting is really, really conservative. Um, I have it down at like 18%, and it was in acclimation mode, acclimation for four weeks. So now it's at full power. Um, and the T5 light bulb, I, I have it switched maybe a couple months ago. So now it's um, Blue Plus and Coral Pro versus before is Blue Plus and a Tinic O3. So I wonder if it is actually too much light and that's when I started looking back to my older videos. I do notice the, the Frog Spawn seems to be a little bit smaller after I swapped the uh, Radeon in. Even, even at, so even at like 18%, um, I wonder if it's just too much light. You know what, let's, let's try it for a couple days. Let's, let's give it like maybe like two or three days. I'll I'll take the T5 offline and we'll just run Radeon. One week later. All right guys, uh, things look about the same, which is not good. And I see that the Krypton candy cane is starting to recede, so uh, not gonna wait, let's do it. Now the plan is to move the LPS that's not doing great into the 10 gallon. We'll try to fit things in at least as much as possible. The funny thing is that though, um, this is new one, right? The new one is not doing good, but the old one is doing fantastic. <laughs> Maybe like uh, all the inappropriate stuff I do to it have has toughened it up. Salt water broccoli. And another thing I'm gonna take with me is this piece of rock because um, it worked really well in terms of uh, propping the coral up. So just in case we need it, let's do it. Let's go upstairs. And this is also the benefit of having multiple reef tanks, right? This is definitely an argument for it. Uh, two tanks, completely separate systems. The condition for each tank will be different and they will be optimal for different kinds of corals. And in this case, um, I'm lucky because all the euphilias are doing fantastic in this tank. Same thing with an enemy, but an enemy is also doing fantastic in a 45. So I'm gonna move all the enemy down there and all the euphilias up here. But for now, um, tonight, I'm gonna focus on just the kryptonite first because that one is just not happy at all. Let's go ahead and add this guy in here. And the good thing is that this colony is not overly large. Well, it's pretty big. It's not overly large, so I should be able to put him in the back, I think. Trusty rock back here. Okay. That's good. As long as it doesn't get knocked over. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, we should be we should be good for tonight. Um, the challenge is tomorrow. I'm gonna get all the enemies out, and then we're gonna bring the frostbite, which is two big pieces. We may have to break up one of the pieces and just kind of just fit everything in here. The next day. Shit. Come here. You see that? Corals fighting each other. <laughs> what the heck? I didn't even see that. Looks like a lead fell into the A can. The A can is trying to eat it. Man, that's insane. Okay, I'm gonna I gotta remove them. They've been together for so long and I'm just seeing this. They divorced. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it looks like a leather kind of fell in and the A can started either attacking or digesting. Man, that's nuts. Okay, anyways, today we're gonna start the big migration. I ate some really, really spicy noodle for lunch. It's been like four or five hours right now. I'm dying. At some point, I I my want, butthole, first of all, is, my butthole is already on fire. But right now, I feel it's like so gross. I'm, I'm about to throw <laughs> up. So at some point, I'm gonna probably run to the bathroom. But the corals cannot wait. Um, the the rose bubble anemone is doing beautiful. You feel it's doing beautiful here today. We're gonna move. The bubble to me down to 45 to make room so I can move all the frog spawn up here because frog spawn is not looking good. This is gonna be fun. I do not look forward to this. Me neither. I'm gonna get three bubble to me. So here's a frog spawn. Let me just kind of move it aside first. Make sure I don't rip anything. I feel like something is holding on here. Is, is it bubble to banana? Oh, I see a lot of Bristol worm. Jesus Christ. Yay! Like all coming out of the rock work. Yay! No yay. Um, I need somewhere to put the frog spawn while I do that. I'll just put it right here for now. Ah, there we go. Whoa. Okay. Cool thing. That is half the tank. 
uh, fish. Oh yeah, this, look, 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 look from up here. It is the rose over the enemy. That's kind of individual. But look from the top. You see this one right there? So this is kind of like straddling both of these guys right here. And I want to, oh boy, I want to really gently, yes, yes, letting go. I want to try my best not to tear the foot. Man, it's gonna be tough. I need a third hand. Uh, no hands here. <laughs> <laughs> I, need to, I need to like kind of peel this off. No, DJ. Do you, can you use one hand to hold this rock? Which one? Just, just hold a rock right here. Don't, don't drop this. What if I crack it? It may crack a tank. Right, just hold it. Hold it steady. Hold it steady. No, don't lift. Don't lift. Don't Keep it down there. Yeah, right here. Hold it. Ready? Gonna drop it. Yay! There we go. I'm so massaging the foot. One eternity later. Mm. So let's just pull the whole thing. Let's pull the whole thing. It's gonna take too long. Bye. Oh, wait, 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 let me... A little fish here? Count the fish. Right. Yeah, both fish are down here. Okay. Fish in there? Yeah. Okay. Alright, let's go downstairs. Ew! Let's do this quick. Let's go. I'm blessed. I'm gonna wash my hands. Oh, porcelain's crap right there. Chairman Bao. See the white crap right there? I'm gonna leave it like this a little bit and hopefully they'll just kind of detach with the gravity. That's one trick. Um, and the reason I want to do this as well is because I need to make room over there. Like once I pop off the anatomy, I need some place to put them. Oh, look at the worm. What the fuck? Where? There. Disgusting. Watch out. They got spikes, so don't touch it. You mean touch it? You don't want to touch it. They, they have spikes. <laughs> this whole thing's coming out. They have not been doing well. They've all been like kind of close up like this. I feel like it's slightly getting, uh, I want to say a little better, but not, honestly, not, not as good as I thought they would be. The bubble tube enemy is definitely enroaching on the whole rock. It's just taken over. So let's go ahead and move this whole colony. Here we go. Frog spawns coming out. <laughs> it's uh, basically two pieces right here. It looks, oh geez. It looks like one large colony, but it's actually two. So this is my dirty little secret, look at that. So here's one. That's colony number one. And here's number two. Oh man, this one got huge, look at this. Can you see this? Guys, I'm at the door, I don't I don't Ah! Let's go, let's go, let's go! Ah. Here's the moment of truth. I was wondering if they'll all fit. Um, I think they should be okay. Okay, this fit, this fit, yeah. Just fit, actually. This looks ridiculous. Um, I'm gonna remove the SPS because it's not doing well. Bring back a big piece of rock and prop the back side up, and then the front side will just face forward, and we'll see how it goes. We'll see how they do. But let me go ahead and take this out. Where's that? Okay, let's go back downstairs. We need to get the rocks out now. That's why you're forever banned. You're going to base Come on, I told Paul. Your fish I tank. Paul, come on. Okay. Man, this tank looks really naked, huh? Look at this. Okay, so lots of things happening right now. There's two pieces of rock. I do want to return one of these back upstairs because there are a lot of biological filtration in here. I can't just take them all out. Um, now the trick is to get the anemone out of these rocks. And that's not going to be fun. The easiest way is to chip the rock. That's the one that's connecting to. I think due to gravity and just not liking the fact that there's no water, it's slowly coming off. Let's see if we can just slowly work this. Now, I would not do something like this with other types of anatomy, but rosebub tip is extremely, extremely hardy. Uh, ideally, you don't want to rip the foot, but you don't want the foot rip. They typically heal. Rip it, rip it. Don't, rip don't rip it. it. I try not to rip it. You know what, let's bring it out. I'm just gonna chip it much easier. I'll use a hammer. Just bring it to the back. Okay, I got it. All right, let's go. I have the hole with my newly painted deck halfway done. Let's get the rocks out here. I uh, figure instead of just like goofing around, risking the whole thing rip, if it did not rip already, let's just go ahead and chip off a little bit of rock. I've shown this a couple times already, but I like to look for like natural divots like this, little pressure points. <laughs> Focus! <laughs> Alright, look. 
I've showed this a couple times already how I pick like the break points for rock. For example, you see an enemy is kind of holding on to here, and there's a, like a natural divot right here. So this is what I would do. I'll stick my flathead screwdriver in here, find a good leverage, and just get a little bit of rock. Ouch! Yes. I'm getting to my eyes. <laughs> so that's a surefire way to get your enemy off the rock. Just chip, chip off the part where they're on. So that's two, I believe. I don't know where the other one went. There's one more on here that I'm hoping to get off. Ouch! There's something. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. This is like a perfect quick break. And there's a nice piece of Bristol worm along with it as well. Lots of worms. I'm really scared. Hate worms. And we got a couple snails and pour some crap in there as well that we'll, we'll put in. So let's go ahead and get these into the 45 gallon first. I don't want them to be out too long. With my lovely wife behind me. <laughs> that doesn't work like that. Too late. Here we go. This is the one with two pieces. One here is kind of like a mush. <laughs> It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Hmm. We should get lots. Let me make sure the rock is in good position. I'm not too worried about where the enemies are because they will move. Um, 100%. But I just want to find a good spot where the rock is not going to just like tumble. An enemy has a pretty good um, survival rate with ripped foot, so I'm not too worried. Here's the nice big one that came off clean. Um, let me just start them off here because gross build an enemy, in my experience, they like crevices. So I'm going to pop in. Uh, right next to a nice overhang. And what they like to do is like they like to kind of go inside the crevice and then reach out under and out. So we got that going and we got some Snack. extra rock. Yeah, I'm just gonna add in here for stability. We're gonna, I'm just gonna hold, hold that little piece of rock in. Uh, we got a nice big Bristol worm. Let's just kind of release it in here. Gross. Let me rinse this out. And then we're gonna bring the rock upstairs to the 10 gallon. Uh, Let's roll. And the challenge here is this is a huge cone. Okay. Some of these are in pretty weirdly shaped. I may have to break it apart. Sacrifices have to be made. This looks kind of cool. Buddies, buddies. Not you. Oh, maybe Hi, DJ. So, there you go. You just kind of snap oh, and spread it apart. Yep. They're not difficult at all. So, normally, clean cut, bone cutter. Um, but for now, you know, my hands are all wet, all juicy already. Gonna, what? There you go, just snap them apart really easily. Just like before, you could put these different branches together and they would just look like a full colony and none, none would be the wiser. Okay, so somehow they all fit. I would like to elevate the middle one, but you know what? I'll just leave it for now and see how they do. I want them to settle in. Tom's uh, obviously really pissed off because all the anatomy is gone. All right, cool. Let's go back down and take a quick look at the an enemy have released a porcelain crab. Porcelain crab still in the bucket. Oh, you still remember him. Chairman Bao. Oh, man. oh, Mac is here. Hey, Mac. You got a porcelain crab right here. Okay, there you go. All right, it's gone. Thank you. All right, cool. We'll check back in a couple hours. Let them settle in a little bit. I need to wash my hand really badly. Use this hand to wipe your. Two weeks later. I want to show you how the tank looks without the frog spawn. Look at how happy the rose bubble tip anemones are. They completely took over the center rock as expected. This one is from the 10 gallon. This is a large anemone from the 10 gallon upstairs. And in the back, if you guys can see it, are the two. That's one right there. And that's the one that ripped a little bit. And it seems to not be bothered at all and opened up nicely. 
So they surprisingly did not really move and they kind of just anchored down to where I left them. So it seems like they really like that center rock. Let's check this out. Just right underneath the Radeon G4 Pro and the T5. Uh, it's the T5 Blue Plus and Coral Plus. Just look at how large and how happy they are. They completely dominated the tank. Now, if you look back to the probably like the very first video of this channel, right, like four and a half, five years ago, I had to kind of lay out the plan for this 45 gallon tank. And this tank, from the start, I've mentioned that I wanted this tank to be a an enemy species only tank. Basically, the the main characters of this tank has always been clownfish and an enemy because they are kind of like synonyms. Synonym, synonym, synonymous, synonymous. I, dude, I can't speak. I know what word I'm trying to say. Yeah, and I, hopefully you know what word I'm trying to say as well. Clownfish and anatomy pretty much represents um, ocean, coral reef, etc. It's really played out, but that's just how it is. And to me, um, they always have a special place in my heart, just like this pair right here. This pair from Blue Ribbon Coys. These are the Mocha Da Vinci's, and they are beautiful, and they've been with me for many, many years. So they are just so happy. Um, in the past, when there was just one anemone with frog spawn up top, I feel like the frog spawn has been cramming the style, cramming this anemone style. And usually the female would not let the male inside the anemone, but uh, things have changed. With so many anemones, this whole rock being anemones, um, the male just enjoy the anemone just as much as the female. Just look at that, no longer they're fighting. And what's surprising to me is that if you can kind of make out in the middle, of the large anemone, there is Chairman Bao, the porcelain crab. Somehow, the clowns don't seem to mind him at all, and he was just able to like weasel his way into the center of the anemone, sitting right by the right by the mouth. And he is probably the one that's most enjoying this whole situation. He's just loving life. Man, just look at this. And I guess the anemone has always been so large, it's just that the frogs has, they have always been like a tug of war um, or for the borders with the frog spawn. And just look at this. When given a chance to really spread out, this is how large the roll scope of the anemone is. Look at that. Um, this tank is 24 inches, two foot. So this guy right here is about a foot, a little bit larger than a foot. So this whole piece right there is one. That's the other one, it's not even um, completely spread out yet. And those two back there as well. And I'm pretty sure in no time, these guys are just gonna take over the entire top part of this tank. Man, this is crazy. Now, enough about the 45 gallon tank. Are you guys ready to see what the 10 gallon tank look like? I think that's the uh, most ridiculous thing. Let's go. And look at all these baby stuff that we're cleaning out. Check out this room. Sneak peek, sneak peek, sneak peek. Okay. All right, so you guys ready? This is, this is ridiculous. I think like of the two tanks, this tank changed the most. Um, and the coral is not even completely acclimated. Let's see. Three, two, one. <laughs> How ridiculous is this? Dude, this tank is a freaking frog spawn, mount frog spawn mountain. Look at this, I can't speak tonight. And there's the two little clownfish right there, DJ MM and Nemo, and they have been playing really well. Um, there's some truth to moving the uh, decor in an aquarium to kind of reset all the boundaries and borders, and they don't fight anymore. And look right here, the Kryptonite candy cane that moved from 45 gallon tank is now doing really well. It's really full, but just look at the frog spawn. Look at the frog spawn, man, this is so ridiculous. Uh, so the ones at the back, those are the ones that have been in this tank. Same with that, you'll notice like the, um, the, the texture or the shape of the tentacle is totally different. Look at these, these are really stubby. Uh, these came from the 45 gallon and it, it's already been two weeks so it's a lot better now. Now they finally started like darkening up and expanding. Um, before they are like really, it's really odd. It's almost like this, just all disc and really stubby uh, tentacles and the tentacle is really light, kind of like that right there. So I think it may really be um, bleached out by the light, if I have to guess. 
But look at these guys right here, slowly acclimating. I think like in two weeks or so, it'll be, not two weeks, sorry, two months or so, then I feel like they'll all be back to normal. Right now, I think like I pulled out a small piece of rock, I added all these new corals in there. I really threw off the balance of this tank. So I'm gonna give it like a two, three months to really catch up before I do a serious video on how this tank has been doing. Um, and then we'll check back, but this is just look ridiculous and somewhere along the line I may go in and fix the skate My idea is to kind of like rotate this whole piece so that it's kind of like coming out of that back wall and we're gonna Move this a little bit closer and elevate a little bit. So there's a little little valley in between uh, right now I just kind of like one big lump. I mean, it's pretty ridiculous looking but it's 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 not the most aesthetic, uh, but it's pretty ridiculously looking I will, every day I walk in, I'll be like, whoa, man, what the heck, look at this. Talk about frog spawn, huh? How ridiculous is that? Uh, but since we're here, look at that. Uh, that's, I think that's like Candy Apple is doing well. Um, Aptasia is doing well. Clem, surprisingly, doing really well. This guy right here. And we got, uh, there's the Jawbreaker mushroom there. It's kind of getting covered up. And we got two shrooms in there. Um, Zola's doing pretty all right. Except for those. Those are a little too close to frog spawn, getting stung. Everything else? Doing all right. Clownfish, doing all right. A little tail rolling back from DJMM. Excellent. Yeah, so that is the <laughs> ridiculous 10 gallon budget nano tank. All right, I hope you enjoyed this update. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, hopefully I'll see you again next Sunday at 12.30 p.m. sharp. If not, check me out on Instagram at Inappropriate Reefer. I upload to Instagram daily and is a lot easier than YouTube. So if things get busy, I'll probably keep IG up to date and YouTube may take a little break. I'm not sure. We'll really have to play it by years. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, you are indeed the hardcore re-squad and I thank you. Again, seriously, thank you for always being there. Well, I'm gonna get the house ready for the baby. Um, I'll see you guys next Sunday at 12.30 p.m. sharp, hopefully. Otherwise, I'll see you on Instagram later on. So we're gonna do a ATI ICP test.